Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Kyle McWaters. And I'm Taylor McWaters. <laughs> Idiots, we got you. I, got you. Yeah, we joking. We switched the names. Here are the that? top ten. Here are the top ten disturbing creatures from history that actually existed. Part two. It's a part two. We gotta have fun. That's really? Number ten. The walking worm. Okay, this was my nickname back in high school. Nice. Good to be back. This one sounds nice. Earthworm Jim, Gumby. I got them all. Just a walking, lanky worm dude. Meet the Hallucigenia fortis, named by Simon Conway Morris back in 1979. Conway Morris named it Hallucigenia fortis because of its bizarre and dreamlike quality. Sure, art's subjective, I guess, teach their own. There were over 109 specimens of these strange aquatic creatures, and they ranged in size from half a centimeter to three centimeters long. Now, number 10 on our list, okay, gotta start small, not too large, and since it was an invertebrate, it lacked a spine. Just like me, no spine, you know, just all worm. Just all air, like an inflatable person. Defining features of the walking worm, as its name suggests, were these tentacles that protruded out from the body. It had spikes that it maybe and possibly, probably walked on. How terrifying is that? And in 2015, scientists realized where its head was. Yeah, its real head. We thought a fossilized stain was its head for like 35 years. And then in 2015, we found its real head. And it looks like it's grinning almost with two eyes. Dare I say worse than the stain? Let's stop looking. Number nine, the big fin squid. From the Magna Pinidae family, the big fin squid, or as I like to call it, this ocean alien with shoulders and elbows, belongs to a group of rarely seen cephalopods with a distinctive morphology, meaning that they're really weird looking and really rare. The first record of us catching and looking at this thing comes from 1907 in the Azores. But due to the damaged nature of the find, little information could be actually extracted. It just looked like a piece of wet crinoline pulled out of a lake. During the 80s, five specimens were found in the Atlantic and Pacific. So eventually the creature found a place amongst the books as its own species entering the Magna Pinidae, or squids. So it's not actually a squid, but like a third cousin. This thing looks like it crashed here on an asteroid, doesn't it? The arms are huge and held perpendicular to the body, creating the illusion of arms and elbows, giving it its trademark alien figure. Some of these things are longer than 10 meters too. That's like a school bus. These things are definitely living under the ice on Jupiter. I'm just gonna say it. I said it. Number eight, giant dragonfly. Dragonflies are awesome. I have a dragonfly tattoo. I had to check which arm. That's awesome. Welcome to being 28, I guess. Uh, but these sticky lads are old school, okay? Dragonflies are sweet. They were the first winged insects to ever evolve 300 million years ago. Modern dragonflies have wingspans of only two to five inches, but ancient giant dragonflies, again, as their name suggests, well, their wingspan was two to three feet. They're a lot bigger and scarier and stickier. I hope they never come back to this size. Again, like I mentioned in part one, it's that high, <gasps> it's that high oxygen level that does the body good. Yeah, the Paleozoic era had these beasts hovering around because, you know, the air was too good back then. Nearly all of their head is its eye, so you're f***ed in every angle, basically. The movie Dune, if you've seen this recently, great film. The Ornithopters, they're engineered to fly like a dragonfly. This is based on real life science. Engineers in real life are studying dragonflies, their flight patterns right now with their wings. Just keep, keep them small and we're good. Study away, keep them small, please. Number seven, the frilled shark. Chlamydos lacus and genius, AKA the frilled shark, is the extinct species of shark that once swam our oceans. <laughs> Thank gosh. Well, actually kind of still does. Oh. The frilled shark is considered a living fossil, not just its age and time spent surfing the coast due to its primitive eel-like brown body. Its snake-like jaws, eight foot body, and the way it moves under the water are all common in ancient serpents and water creatures. Yeah, this thing's a water dragon, basically. This thing's like an eel-serpent shark hybrid. It swims the Atlantic and Pacific oceans, usually in deep murky water. So am I just gonna like snorkel into one of these things any day now? Good thing is that these things are really hard to find. Like, really hard. Usually caught by accident in commercial fishing nets, usually at depths anywhere between 50 and 1,000 meters. So unless you're free diving at night and have a supersonic lung span, you should be okay. Number six, the gastric brooding frog. I'm a big fan of frogs, except for when they, you know, hatch out of their back. I don't like that. It's arguably the worst thing I've ever seen online, and I have read it, and I've had read it for years. These frogs would swallow its egg back in the day, and then they would hatch them out of their mouth. If you watched it backwards, you'd be like, no, stop. They all went extinct back in 1983, but scientists have somehow figured out how to implant dead cells into a fresh egg from an entirely different frog species. So we may just see this fancy frog make a fancy comeback. Yeah, let's just hope these ones aren't born out of their backs. Do you want to see it? I feel like you want to see it. There it is. Enjoy. You asked for it. 
thumbs up for this. You know, it's life, it's life, it's nature. Number five, the giant sloth. Megatherium is an extinct species of ground sloth. Locals to South America, they live between the Pliocene through the Pleistocene eras. Basically like a really long time. Yeah, this thing was big and heavy as a modern day elephant, but like sloth form. This massive beast was first discovered in 1788 on the banks of Argentina. The bones, of course, not one. Megatherium became extinct around 12,000 years ago, thank gosh, during the Quaternary extinction event, which also claimed most other large mammals in the New World. The extinction coincides with early America's settlement and the kill sites where sloths were slothered. I tried. Suggesting that humans were out fist fighting these things, aiding in such extinction. Yeah, all of a sudden mammoths are like way less scary. I wonder if they moved as slow too, like a bear the size of an elephant moving in slow motion. So I just like throw it, it's like right, it's like right here. Just be like, there. Number four, Tasmanian tiger. Once native to Australia, of course, the land of horrors, the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylakine, was a massive carnivorous marsupial that went extinct around the 1930s. Thank the Lord. Major factors here are, as you guessed, climate change, hunting, and its genetic diversity wasn't all too great. Now it's sad on one hand because these beautiful creatures, also kind of terrifying, they disappeared so recently, but it's recent enough that we have a shot of bringing them back. Yeah, I'm just scaring you with this one. I'm like, ah, it's terrifying, right? They're coming back 2024 in IMAX. Yeah, imagine looking outside and seeing this thing on your own front yard. Are we ready for this? I'm not. I've seen a moose once. Very scary, very scary. I was going 40 miles an hour. I was like, that's it. Specimens still remain preserved in jars. Yeah, thank God for those jars. I was wondering what that was in the fridge. A Tasmanian tibia, nice, yum. In the science world, we already have some of the Tasmanian tiger genes present after scientists inserted them into a mouse fetus. Again, bold, but sure, they did it. One guy thought of that, how gross is that? The Australian Museum has been working hard to bring this beast back to life, only they're still lacking the DNA to fully recreate it. So if you have any jars of Tasmanian tiger parts, lend a helping hand for science, please. Number three. Dunkleostis, from Dunkel's Bones, named after paleontologist David Dunkel, who discovered and studied the fossils. Ostis is Greek for bone, referring to the giant tectonic plates looking things that this thing is made up of. Being one of the largest and most powerful fish ever to swim in our waters, ever, these swimming tanks could eat pretty well anything it wanted including other Dunkleostises. This thing was top dog. The first remains were discovered along Lake Erie Cliffs. That's scary, that's like, Right over there. Dunkleosis could suck in and bite straight through any animal alive at the time, from the thick shelled ammonites to the other placoderms with body armor. This thing was basically like the great great grandfather of any fish who eats other fish. They would even bite each other and dent their own armor. Their diet shifted from soft bodied prey, such as whales and sharks to larger armored prey, such as placoderms. Basically, it liked to eat the little crunchy stuff instead of the soft bodied megalodons. What a sentence. Number two, the moa. This New Zealand bird went extinct about 600 years ago. See, moa, they were these flightless birds, massive, might I add, and archeologists first discovered its fossil in a cave, just hidden in the very back, right in the depths. Its flesh and everything was still attached. See, these ancient birds would reach about five feet tall, and when you think of dinosaurs, you probably think that's quite petite in comparison, but no, listen up. The birds stopped flying right after the dinosaurs went extinct. According to biologist Matthew Phillips from the Australian National University of Canberra, once the dinosaurs off, they now had freedom. They could go outside without having to make any daring escapes, right? They weren't terrified every day to be lunch. They walked around, they got fat, and they hung out in caves. So it might seem a little depressing to watch a creature lose the ability to fly, but it's because they're eating good, you know? They're good problems, right? Scientists have recently discovered MOA DNA from ancient eggshells, so there's a possibility we might see these fatties hit the skies once again. Let's keep them on Weight Watchers this time around, you know? Let's keep them, let's keep them in the sky, keep them. Number one, you're a pterid. Long story short, an ancient huge sea scorpion. That's it, I'm done, I'm done. No, no, I said no spiders, earwigs, and scorpions. No, that's it. An extinct group of arthropods that form 470 million years ago with 250 species of its own, the Euripidid, uh, is the most diverse Paleozoic class of its time. This is like the first of the first of the creepy crawly stinger pincher things, you know? They declined in numbers and diversity until becoming extinct during the Triassic extinction event about 250 million years ago. 
Yeah, thank God. I can't even put a crayfish on a hook without squirming. Called sea scorpions, of course, because of two qualities. Being able to go in and out of water and having two sets of lungs. Yeah, this thing's a fossil, right? This thing just got way more terrifying. They are the largest known arthropods ever to have lived on Earth, ranging anywhere between a foot and four feet big. That's a longboard, Taylor. A skateboard with claws and pinchers and a tail, in and out of the water. All right, the animal kingdom, how beautiful. Well, there you have it, folks. 10 more disturbing creatures that actually existed. And some that still do. I don't know, that shark sting, is that, is that swimming around still? Yeah, it's still swimming around. I'm never swimming again. I'm never even going in a pool. Gross. Yeah. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. And I'm Kyle McWaters. See you next time on Bumblebee. Bumblebee. So we might, we might just see this, mate. Oh yeah, these are all aliens, for sure. This is like top 10 aliens, period. Dunkleostis. 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 Wrong. Okay. Dunkleostis. Dunkleostis. Got it.